Hey everyone, I'm your host today, Elle Russ, and I'm here with Cindy Lou Martin. She is Hi. the author. Hi! She's <laughs> the author of a really incredible book, an internationally acclaimed book called The Four Man Plan. And she also started a company called Malibu Essential Oils. So we're going to talk for the first part about how she manifested her now husband, Earl, who's amazing, and of which a chapter in her book is devoted to him. And then we'll go into her health journey because she's got a lot of expertise in this area and, and we'll move into talking about essential oils. And I, I personally have benefited so much from having them in my life and being consulted by both Cindy Lou and her husband, Earl, who are both global certified aromatherapists. So anyway, welcome. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Let's talk about the four man plan. Um, you know, it's a really interesting, unique ma how to manifest, how to date, how to find your love. Tell us about your love journey and what brought you to even you know, get to the point where you're going to write a book about this. Well, I was a wreck. I was, I sucked at love. I was terrible at relationships. I was a little bit of a stalker. Um, I never really could find one person to have something healthy with. I just I was a serial monogamist. You know, I'd get with a guy, I'd sleep with him and assume, oh, now he's my boyfriend. And then, you know, tumble into hell. Uh, and I did it so many times that after one particularly nasty breakup with a guy that I had been going back and forth with for five years, I decided to do every, you know, there's that Seinfeld episode. I'm, I'm literally watching Seinfeld, like crying my eyes out, right? And there's that one episode where... George realizes that his life is shit and Jerry suggests that he do the opposite of everything he would instinctually do. Right, right. And mm -hmm. then maybe his world would turn out better if everything he thought he should do, he did the exact opposite. And I thought that was like a spiritual epiphany. You know? It was, <laughs> I said, clearly, yeah. Yeah, I said, I'm going to do everything exactly opposite, right? So I started mapping out how I did things. And then I thought, okay, let me, let me invert that somehow or change that somehow. So, you know, I stopped sleeping with guys on the first, second date. I decided to go out with more than one guy at a time. I decided to be very, very transparent with all the men, you know, like I just started making all of these decisions and it just developed from there. And then other, my friends were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just doing this different thing, you know, and they started getting on board and, and, um, and then after I was doing it for about nine months, I met Earl and, um, Earl was actually a client of mine for my energy healing work, which is a little morally ambiguous, but I told myself I could do that once, <laughs> once and only once. A little morally ambiguous. I love that. The acknowledgement of that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have no licensing, so there's nothing that can be taken away from me and there's no official rules, but you know, it's that whole uh, client practitioner thing that I thought, mm, okay, just this one time. You know what? I also love, first of all, the chapter in your book, which is Earl, which is your husband. He's so awesome, by the way, as you know, I feel that way, but honestly, for the people who are watching and listening, uh, you will want to read her book because if you met her husband, you would be like, all right. And they are compliment each other so well. He scored, she scored. Yep. There you go. The four man plan. And it's just really inspiring. You guys have been together a really long time now. How long? Yeah. You know, I'm starting to think it really, I was really onto something. So it's been about <laughs> 17 years. Um, we've been I think married. You your book. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm ready to stand on it and be like, I did it. Um, and we've been together 17 years, married 11 years. Um, yeah, it's just been, and you know, if you knew me then, he was not a likely match for me. Right. Talk about that because you mentioned that it took a lot for you to be able to even attract and be able to be with someone like Earl. So what were right, those? Who is honest, loving, and willing. You know, that's one yeah. of the criteria we have women look for when they're dating is like, are they honest? Are they loving and are they willing? Because even two out of three of those, no go. That's right. Yeah. Let's get into that a little bit more because your husband seems to be all damn three. No question. He's about all three, you know, and if he, if he fudges, he never, he's always honest, right? Um, the other two, sometimes he'll drag his heels on <laughs> as we all can, you know? And um, so those are just the three things that I found that 
you know, women make lists, a uh, wish lists of the guy, right? Everybody has this like page and a half list of all the things they want in a man. And I look at their list and just pretty much just scribble it, just cross it out. This girl it, is not your list or was not. Oh what my God, no, in, no, in, not in, at not all. Not physically, not like there were some things that you were like, he wasn't my type, right? Describe not at all. what your type used to be. And then let's describe Earl or he can come down the stairs. And well, say. my type was, yeah, maybe he'll wander down after he needs another snack. Uh, my type was assholes. You know, I mean, my type was trying to heal my wounds with my father. Sure, as most women. Yeah, so if they were a bit of a philanderer, you know, uh, somebody who was unreliable. So, you know, I just wanted to fix that, fix that, fix that. So Earl did not fall into that category. Um, and because I had four space for four men or more, really you have up to 16 for people who are dating online, you know, those little exchanges, those are just quarter men. They're not even whole men right? There's categories, uh, quantifications of men that are based on connection, unlike, you know, the one to 10 scale that people put us on, women on. We do it to each other, even. So the quantification is really based on um, how you connect with them and how far along the relationship is. You know, you mentioned a little bit about it that alludes to this, but your book is Do the Math. Without going through the entire four-man plan, there is, in your mind, you're like, I mean, I love how you say in the book, you're like, you know what, I'm Chinese, I'm good at math, so this is how. <laughs> well, what I really needed to do is, like, I would look at the rest of my life and see how high-functioning I was. You know, I was very, like, a professional actor and had it together enough to really be able to be not emotional about auditions and, you know, just be a pro and use my logical mind to assist the artist in me, you know, the creative in me, the more emotional being in me. And I thought, why can't I just use that? Why do I have to be such a mess at relationships when everywhere else I had good friendships? You know what I mean? Like all of these good things that were happening to me. You're mastering I, it elsewhere, but just not with the guys. And that's a classic yeah. thing for alpha females too, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. Right. Like people forget. I, I coach clients all the time and they, they do. I, I'm working with somebody right now who is a Harvard grad, uh, heart research doctor. Oops, forgot to get married or even into any kind of serious relationship in the last 10 years. She needs right? a reboot. Yeah. She needs, and now like, like, you know, heart, smart, like saving people, she's fine, she's done it. She just wants a relationship of her own. She wants to like feel her own heart, not everybody else's. <laughs> so it is something that happens with women who are really career driven and smart. So I just thought, listen, I'm smart, right? I can transfer those smarts and sort of reparent myself, give myself yeah. a structure for dating, have it not be so sloppy and random and, you know, like having no great feedback from the men, just guessing around, right? So that was what I thought. It's like, let me use what I have to improve where I'm weak. I love it. And, um, on that note, you've, there's been a lot of marriages through the four-man plan. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. So I'd love to hear about, um, without obviously giving away identities or specifics, you know, some 180s, like where did, you know, Jane Doe go? Where did she start? And what was she attracting? And then what did she end up with? Because there's a couple of lovely success stories. You've been invited to several weddings, which is, I mean. Oh, I actually so officiated. Awesome I've officiated two weddings. <laughs> That's I awesome. became an officiant so that I could marry my four-man planners. Um, you know, a couple of the striking stories. And my demographic or the demographic for the four-man plan, because it has a life of its own, um, is usually late 20s all the way up to the 60s. I actually had an octogenarian um, who found a man in his 60s. Scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> Through the four-man plan. So the... Um, the, I would say the thing that happens, like I had one client who was in her forties and she 
was so sure that she was an old maid, that nobody would want her, right? That she was just past her prime and how could she compete? And really what I do when I work with clients is just eliminate all of that negative self-talk and have them see their value and express that value. And it's really easy to express the value through the four-man plan because you tell the men that you're seeing other men. That's one of the first things you have to do, you know, is let them know that they ain't the only uh, name on your dance card, right? And that alone kicks in something with men that is something they really know how to do. They know how to compete with men for something, right? And that also then eliminates that right away, you're learning how to speak your truth that is relevant to them. But at that point, when I tell women, like you need to tell them you're dating other men early and often, you know, two or three times by the end of the second date, surely, right? And, and what that does is let them know that they don't own you. And if they want more from you, they're going to have to step up, right? Which is a really exciting part about it. But for women that are in a position where they feel unwanted or old or, you know, have body image issues, like we just help women work through that with experiences with men, not through like a therapeutic model, right? It's actually an action model where once you start doing the plan, you see, you get a barometer for where you're at because the men that you attract will reflect it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had one woman, she's like, I've had three stalkers. And I said, okay, right. Let's look at how you're contributing that. She's like, you're blaming the victim. I'm like, if somebody had one stalker and like, you're not famous, she was not famous. Right, right, right. But if you got three, yeah. <laughs> right. So it's like, if you have three legitimate stalkers, there's something energetically, it's not conscious. It's, it's, it's not even your fault necessarily, but it does need to be addressed, right? If things are repeating in you, there's no point in you thinking that all men are stalkers. They're not. Well, or you'll prove yourself right because then that's yeah. not the belief system and the energy you're putting out there. Yeah, having, exactly. you know, when things come in threes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and it was know? like in two years, she had three stalkers. I was right. like, I, I mean, I couldn't even do that on purpose if I was trying. No, no. <laughs> get yeah. three stalkers. You know, so there is something that we do to ourselves that creates these patterns, just like I kept attracting my dad over and over and over again. Oh, and you'll end up dating your brother or your mother or your d- male or female, right? You will definitely go for what was familiar to you growing up for the people that raised you or were around you. This is classic psychology. Yeah, and you're just unconsciously you, expressing your wounds. Yeah, and it's until you notice it. And sometimes you notice it, you get beyond it, and there might be a couple little uh, leftovers. Like you might start to really attract the, the new and the, the, oh, getting out of the old. And there may be a couple lingerers, you know. I still still go like, you know, I recently had someone working for me and when it kind of broke apart, I was like, oh my God, it was my dad again. You know what I mean? And it it was- It doesn't have to be romantic, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, we, we do that. So as far as like point A to point B, I've kind of seen it all. Everything from like frigid, you know, virgin, like I always say, you've, once you haven't had sex in seven years, you've reclaimed your virginity, right? Because no cell in your body knows sex. Right, because it, tra- it, it regenerates your, your, seven years. Your whole body has regenerated. So there is no piece of you that remembers it except for some like lodged memory. That's not the same as, uh, you know, having, being a virgin or not a virgin is physical, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, so p- everything from that to just, taking girls off the pole, right? Helping them get their self-esteem together. Yeah, let's get those I, ladies off the pole. Yeah. Hey, and then I, I work, I mean, gotta work, but let's get them off the pole if we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, unless you ch- you're choosing the pole, I got nothing against the pole. The That's pole. your power move. Your power, yeah, if your power move is the pole. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Even for money, like that's totally fine if you're making that decision con- consciously from a strong place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say one of the ones that really warms my heart is this woman, um, she actually came to see my one woman show 10 years ago or 11 years ago in Santa Monica. And when she showed up, 
she had just found out that her husband of 15 years was gay. Oh. And it blew up her whole everything, you know, and it just shattered her into so many pieces. And when she came to my show, she's like, she said that was the first time she had laughed in two years. That's awesome. Which was awesome. You know, you know, for you and me, like that's a big deal to give somebody a laugh when they just have been far away. They've been down the well and you stick a ladder down there and be like, come on up. It's funny out here. Right. And she saw things in a different perspective. And she's one of the ones that I ended up doing her uh, wedding ceremony for because she ended up coming to the show like eight or nine times from Orange County to Santa Monica, bringing a carload of friends, you know, and just watching it over and over and over again. And then they started doing it, right? They'd start doing it as a group. So when I showed up to officiate the wedding, the women were like, oh my God, you guys, it's like Elvis entered the building, you know what I, I mean? It. In several years until she, she had to recover she had to get her mojo back. She had to feel sexy and viable again. And then she just landed just such an amazing guy. Right. And so straight that I had to tell him not to mention her nipples in his vows. <laughs> right. Like, cause he was just so, so enamored great. with her sexually. You know what I mean? He's like talking about her breasts and her butt. I'm like, so with the family there, maybe we'll just take out these words. <laughs> Right. But so it, you found someone that, very straight. Um, on that note of just, um, and again, here's the thing. It's not always one for one. And let me get into this. So I, I actually know um, a family where both a brother and sister ended up with people that were gay. They married, one married a man that ended up being gay. One married a brother and sister. Interesting, right? Wow. Interesting. Both in the same family. So <clears throat> what I would say is, if you're running into scenarios where people are hiding something, it's not always that you are. There could be another lesson there, but it's always good to look briefly to see, are you, and it doesn't have to be a dark secret. It doesn't have to be something anyone else in the world would even think was weird. It just has to be something you feel ashamed about possibly being rejected for. doesn't matter what it is. It could be that you have a mangled, like big toe and you're ashamed to take your feet off and your whatever it is, right? So it doesn't have to be something we think the world would go, oh, I get that. And I just, I, I, I've been through that before. Um, I know you have, and it's always good to look at. It also can sometimes relate to just unavailability mm -hmm. uh, coming from a father figure or some kind of parental exactly. situation. So it's I not- said one of the lines in my book and my show was like, there was nothing hotter to me than the back of a man's head. <laughs> Why is that? I'm like, oh, you're going away. <laughs> I want you so bad. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Even yeah, if I didn't right. like them, right? I could have sent them away. And as soon as they turn around, I'm like, that is so sexy. I got to have you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just saying, you know, on, uh, for us, you know, what people don't understand too is like, you could be experiencing that at a one. Right. So like maybe you've got something that you're kind of at a one or a two with that's still a little keyhole that somebody that's a 10 of that thing can walk through. And the nice thing about the four man plan is because you tell men that you're dating other men. Right. Um, a lot of them that are kind of shady or not right, they will express it a little faster because the competition, like what happens a lot is women get women do this thing where they go out on a couple of days and the guy's like really into them and, Oh, I'm your boyfriend. We have this future and, and they're flattered. Right. And they think that's the one, but really if somebody is diving that deep in the first two to three dates and they take possession of you, that's actually a red flag. Thank you for saying that. That is a huge red flag. It's a huge um, red flag. It happened to me. And I remember when it did and you, called it and you were like, Ooh, you didn't four man plan it. And I'm like, you're right. I didn't. I kind of jumped in there too, uh, a little bit too jumped in there. Cause it was, it's delicious. It's what we're looking whatever, for. Yeah. And you want to skip those steps. You know, you right. want to skip through the courting period and the courting yeah. period is absolutely delicious. That is the point in which both people are in a dance you know, and that there are other people on the dance floor and that you have, you experience choice. Right. 
and they experience your value. And maybe they're also experiencing choice. Like, let's face it, the difference between the four-man plan and what men in general, you know, who are dating do, the big difference is that I tell the women, you have to tell the men that you're dating other men. Which is a weird, awkward thing that most women, including myself on first glance, would go, ooh, that's a little, but you know what? Here's the thing. Like you said earlier, transparency. Yeah. I, it's the same with us. We, you have a word for it, but we talk about, we're, we, Cindy Lou and I are both absolute no BS people, for yeah. real. Like, there's yeah. no joke about it. And um, <laughs> in fact, sometimes too much. Maybe we, we got to sometimes. Add. Right. I'm sure I've had editing problems myself, but. No, um, not to me. <laughs> well, not for someone like you. I but want it all. You know, BS, you know? Why not be that in relationships? You know what? Because here's the thing. In life, that's what is real. Like, I appreciate that about people. My uh, publisher, Mark Sisson, who you know as well, real no BS person. I love that type of personality because it's honest, it's transparent, and it's authentic. And you know exactly. And it's what precedent. Get. That's right. right. People who want to wait until they share, wait till I really get to know this person to share this thing that might make it, you know, it's like, no, you're setting a precedent, right? In the first two weeks or four or five encounters, you set a precedent for the relationship that if you have to change it and reverse it, it is a full on negotiation, right? You can't just have been one way for a while and then, and then suddenly stop being that way. Right. Or, or, Cause then you're going to get caught in that appearance BS pretending game. Yeah. Again. Right. And that's, uh, no one trusts that. So it's no. just so when you write out and be loved for who you are and just go, that's here right. it is. Not everything, but the stuff that you feel you might be rejected for, and you might, but you know what? But l- good. Need- that's if right. If a guy rejects you on a first or second date. Great. Because especially today in this day and age, right? Um, because you're seeing other men, that's an issue right away, right? And if you can't tell somebody that because you're afraid of what they'll think of you, that's also an issue. Right. And you can be, and I don't know, I mean, what you think about this, but listen, in this day and age too, with safe sex and issues, there can be a little bit of a caveat to that conversation. It could be, hey, listen, I'm dating other men. And, and if you start to be a little bit physical with someone, you can always say, but listen, if it, if it starts to become more than just light, I will be honest about it so that you can make a decision about your health. You know, that's very mature as well. That's so, all outlined in the book, right? Because right, you don't need to, people think you're a hoe bag and you're just, that's, no, and you're, you're in it, technically with, if you're doing the four man plan, you only sleeping with one of the men in the plan. There's actually not room for two of them. Should I show them the picture? Yes. Okay. I love <laughs> so um, this is a graph and this is the guy that you're sleeping with. Right? <laughs> I love that graph so much. <laughs> because I made him a two and a quarter, okay. right? Because you can't have, then you can't have two and still fit them in the graph without them knowing about each other, right? So knocking swords, is that what you're yeah. <laughs> there's really only room for one. And that one, if you decide to sleep with somebody else, not the person that you're sleeping with, you have to completely get rid of the guy that you're sleeping with. You have to tell him I've got because you've really ruined the potential of that relationship. No guy who wants you long term Right. is going to be okay with the fact that you slept with him and then slept with somebody else. Like they think their dick is like a magical unicorn horn, right? And once they've put it in you, they, it's, you are, have to be like on your knees going like, this is the best ever. And I would never overthrow that if you want a long-term relationship with them. Right. If you decide that you're going to sleep with this other person, you really have to choose, okay, that guy's out right? Because I'm going to move on to this other guy. So it really helps us to make a conscious choice, knowing that it's not just like a rule of the four-man plan. It's something that honors men and- It's out of integrity. Yeah. It's just a thing of integrity. Be like, okay, if this guy has potential, how about I don't sleep with other guys? Now, before you've slept with them is completely different. When I met Earl, I mean, you know, I had a partner- Right. Yep. And he like actually, a or a real serious. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's so awful to even it still admit it, but he was the guy I went back and forth with for five years. Sure. sure. And I broke up with him to start the four man plan. And then I added him to the four man plan, which he accepted. 
right? Because he was my, my partner, my sex partner. So he's like, yeah, that's totally cool with me. He's like, this is the way I always wanted it. You know what I mean? He's like, you could date whoever you want as long as I'm the only one you're sleeping with. I was like, how convenient and lovely for you. But then when I, when I brought Earl in and Earl was the only other person during the four man plan that I overthrew that guy for, I had to tell this guy, like, we can't, we can't sleep any t together anymore and can't really see each other anymore. Right. I'd never seen a man cry so hard. <laughs> I really, really hadn't. I mean, we, he was just weeping from the loss because really the relationship had gotten to the point where he really was enjoying it. He didn't realize how much uh, you meant to him until you were gone a little bit. Yeah. So there's that. He needs to do the formula. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and then by then it was kind of too late for us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so it was, but it was kind of beautiful for me to have that transition talk with him because I went like, Oh my God, you care. Like, in your own way, in your own fucked up way in which we can never have a relationship, you care, you know? So that was, that was a really nice moment. And I think a lot of four-man planners, as much as they have trepidation for a lot of my suggestions, right, um, when they actually practice them, not just intellectualize them and try to think of how it'll go, because everybody thinks a guy will react badly to them telling them that they're dating other guys. Here's the usual reaction. Oh, thank God. You know, me too. Right. So then it's, it's the, the pressures off for them to be, you know, they don't think you're going to like dig their, your hooks into them. And if you need a ride to the airport or something sweet done for you, like there's four other options. But that being said, when they know about each other, suddenly you have three offers of rides to the airport where before you had zero. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I want to, God, we, we could talk so much longer on that, but let's move on from the four man plan and get into oils. <clears throat> so actually, which have a little bit to do with the four man plan because we could talk about the mojo, getting the mojo back. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had a couple of podcasts, myself and you and Earl on the Primal Blueprint podcast. So if people are interested, you can Google Cindy Lou and Earl Martin Primal Blueprint podcast. There's a couple of real in depth ones on oils. Um, but we're going to get into a little bit here. How did you go from being a performer of 20 years, an author or whatever, and then literally just, this is a passion. This just came in because you can tell with how you are with it. How did essential oils get in, into your life? It's actually the same route, right? My health was sucking. I was in a hole. I felt bad every day. You know, I'm the girl who is, I always say it's like, if I, if I could, if I could write off all the Manhattans and condoms through my dating life because I ended up using them as material <laughs> for my book, you know, because it was just such a nightmare and I was pulling myself out of a nightmare and I was making a system that I could hang on to, you know what I mean? That, that could, could get me out of there. I was just talking to a friend and, and like I said before with the girls, like, well, if you're in a hole, don't forget to put the ladder in, right? So it was that same thing where I was like, this is so bad. I was 37 years old. We had been living in black mold without knowing it for uh, seven years in our house in Culver City. And I worked in the home. So it was like blowing on me. And I was slowly getting like sicker and sicker and sicker. I was doing my one woman show and I thought it was just stress. So I went to the doctor and they put me on Xanax and sleeping pills. And I just, you know, I, and I said, I really think it's more than that. I'm racked with pain. I can't quite control my bladder, my bowels, my coughing. You know what I mean? I was wearing adult diapers in bed and I was like, this is not a cute look. You know, this oh, horrible, is horrible, horrible, depressing, awful, disgusting, awful situation to go through. Ever. It was. Yeah. And again, I just pulled myself up. I'm really, I have to credit Earl for this one yeah. because my book was coming out, published internationally in seven different languages, right? I had a, oh, they wanted me to do my one woman show off Broadway. 
So I was negotiating between, I want to do a 200 seat theater. They wanted me to do a 500 seat theater. Would I do eight shows a week? No. Could I do six shows a week? You know what I mean? And like, I come back from New York and, and, and having done all these meetings and I'm literally like shaking and I'm curled in a ball. Like, like we're, we're laying in your bed is not doing it. You know what I mean? Like it's not enough. So I'm just like trying to recover by like shaking it out of my body. And, um, he just sat down on the side of the bed and he said, no, you know, I got off the phone with people trying to negotiate six shows a week instead of eight shows a week. And I literally like can't even stand up or breathe or do anything. He watched me perform through the whole phone call. Right. And, um, he just was like, no, you're not doing it. And I was like, fuck you. No way. I am doing it. Yeah, Broadway. Like, no, must go I'm on. Like 20 years. Away. It's my own show. It's my own stuff. There's no understudy. You know what I mean? I was like, no, you're crazy. There's no way I'm not doing it. And he's just like, look at you. Like, you're lying to everybody. You're going to die on stage. You're going to die out there. You know, like it's not worth it. I had a TV deal with Fox. I had all of these things. I, and, and it just, to this day, it is like, and he, he literally said this and it was the, the first and really the last time he's ever said this to me. He said, I'm putting my foot down, <laughs> which no, but he saved you really because you really would have did. Yeah. yeah. And you would have dropped dead probably on stage and that would not have been a story that I... <laughs> no, know, that's- no. And you know, people can d- drop dead on stage doing comedy. Like comedy is the hardest thing on your adrenal glands, you know, like, because you got to be riding that wave ahead of everybody the whole time. My show was 75 minutes long. You know, people are like, that's a marathon. I'm like, I know, right? So that moment was the turning point. And I had to call every single person. And I lied. I, I didn't really let them know why I wasn't doing it. And that really hurt me. That lack of transparency, that protecting my ego, that really hurt me because nobody ever wanted to work with me again because they thought I was just being flaky. So and- that's another thing where, you know, I understand it's like it might have been way better for your own soul and for the situation to just be like, this is what's happening, but we are ashamed at admitting that there's some sickness or a disease or some, I didn't know what it was even. So I didn't, I couldn't even tell them. I just said, I don't think I can do it, you know, which was an honest answer, but not enough of an answer for people to have any sort of compassion or under, you know, not that our industry has a lot of compassion, well, but just clarity. There would have been more clarity. Sure, sure, sure. There would have just, listen, it would have been better for everybody always to be transparent. So that being said, it was in that moment that we, we decided to move into the mountains. And I spent the next three years nursing my health, playing with horses every day, doing all my meditating. Like I basically completely changed my lifestyle and um, started to feel better little by little, but it wasn't enough. Right. And then I just started like gaining weight and, you know, then that started taking me out. Earl took to making bread and ice cream, which, uh, we, we don't do cause we're probably, no, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a nice country kind of activity at the time. But so like I'm eating this homemade bread every single day. It was delicious, but I was just like falling apart, you know, on a diet level. And, um, But so I started just really doing research, you know, then I started taking a deep dive into going like, I don't want to feel like this for the next whatever many years. And people will try to tell you like, oh, you're, you're 40 now. That's just the way it goes. You know, just get used to it. It's downhill from here. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You know? And I'm like, no, no, it's every day of my life, you know? And so that's when I started just really taking on all of these other processes, really using myself as a guinea pig, just like I did with the four-man plan. And the oils stepped into my path. And 
they are certainly not the only thing that has contributed to my wellness, my consciousness, my ability to advocate for my own body and my own health, to say yes and no to doctors, you know, to say yes and no to supplements and medications and, you know, all the suggestions that are made to me to read all these articles, listen to all these podcasts, you know how we do, right? Read books and navigate through with my body as a partner. The oils just stood out as this is an everyday application that is going to create an environment for you for healing. And on top of that, rejuvenate this sense of my body that had been abused and neglected by the black mold, right? Accosted by toxins constantly, suddenly was like, it was like, you know, coming out of the, these shackles and just going like, oh my God, it's so beautiful here. You know, these smells are so beautiful. They make me feel so good. And, and that's really how it started. And then you and your husband got so into it, you went and became globally certified <laughs> aromatherapist. So, I mean, you dove heavy into the science and then you really kind of have a brain for that and a knack for really that level of uh, in-depth knowledge. Um, and then you created your own company when they affected you so much. You, I mean, it's so funny when, you know, like I tell people, I would totally laugh at you and tell you to F off if you, it, seven years ago or even like 10 years ago, you're like, you should get into the health industry. I'd be like, no, never. No way. I don't want to no do part interest. Of it. Yeah. No interest. I'm an entertainer. I'm a clone. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Like no interest. But you know, again, it's about, and, and this is part of empowerment too, don't just get stuck on one track. If you are compelled and have a passion in another arena, follow that. It can be side, it can be alongside, and no one has to say anyone has to quit a, a, a job to, to become this, but you got to go with these interests because they're coming in for a reason. And this really took a turn. And now you've been helping so many people with your company, Malibu Essential Oils, including myself. So uh, you, have, you have a yummy thyroid blend. You have so many custom blends. Um, and I guess- We'll say, what, tell us what oils you use to blend. Um, well, we use, uh, and this is the crazy thing, right? I tell people, I went to get certified in aromatherapy so you don't have to, <laughs> right? Because nobody took it more seriously and nerdy than I did. I was first introduced to doTERRA oils. Um, and they're the ones that helped me with my pain. Like I walked into this, free class at the Malibu Healing Center where I was a practitioner for energy healing work, right? Um, and I, they put, my dog had just died. They put this deep blue rub on me. They gave me some frankincense and some orange to inhale. And I, I, I just felt so free and wonderful. I had two wrist braces on. Those went into my purse, never to be used again, right? And just got a big kit. Then I, I was really excited. I had no knowledge of essential oils before that. So I had no opinion. You know, I just didn't generally just didn't care for them because, you know, 75 to 80 percent of them are adulterated in some way. And most of them have some synthetics in them. So for me, who had gone through so much with my respiratory system, I had no interest in, in, in putting any additional synthetics, no matter how nice they smelled. Right. right? So these were different. And once I had experienced them and Earl and I were like, what is this, right? What is this essential oil thing? We, we usually go to school one at a time um, when we are upping our education. And th in this case, I was like, well, one, if one of us goes, I'll go, right? And he's like, oh no, if one of us goes, I'll go. I'm like, dude, you have like a job and stuff. So he, he still thinks it was a little bit of career suicide <laughs> because it took four months driving back and forth to Sedona, Arizona, you know what I mean? And because um, there's very few live classes. But in the end, we realized after smelling over like, I don't know, I think we smelled 400 oils while we were there. Wow. Every day we just wanted to go home to our doTERRA oils. And so that's when I realized um, I was just in love with doTERRA, right? I wasn't in love with essential oils in general, it's like people who say like, oh, are you, you know, I have like one friend who is with a woman right now and she's like, oh, I don't identify as lesbian. It's just that person. <laughs> so I wouldn't even say like, oh, I'm an essential oil lover. I'm actually mostly a doTERRA lover. doTERRA lover. Yeah. So you use doTERRA and yeah. I love some of these uh, 
blends you've created. Let's talk about a few of them. I mean, yeah. everyone can go to Malibu Essential Oils or just MalibuEO.com. And uh, let's talk about, there's some unique ones. Let's talk about Mojo and how that was developed. It's a, a the yummiest, yummiest of all spring, summer, warm weathery type of thing, at least for me. And um, I can put a drop in a little bit of seltzer water or something. So that's nice, but also just inhaling or diffusing it. Some are, you know, meant for certain reasons, but tell us what's in Mojo and how that came about. Cause that's a little bit for man plenty. Yeah. Um, Mojo I actually created for a woman who was going through a really difficult breakup. And for the most part, our blends that are, our blends were created for us, right? It's just, it's just like everything else, like make something for yourself do it for you, heal yourself in some way, and it will work for other people. You know what I mean? Is, is, is what I found in my careers um, that it's okay if you're starting from like kind of a bad place because when you can map your journey out, then you can share that map with other people, right? right. So Mojo was created for a woman going through a very bad breakup. And I knew right away I wanted to include, and she had really lost her Mojo. In fact, she said that. So ginger is the oil of empowerment. I knew I wanted that in there. And then um, bergamot is the oil of self-love. So I knew I, she needed to have a little more piece of that. Then we do a process of muscle testing with people sometimes and really sort of discover what they need. And um, the next one that really came up for her was she needed lime. Lime is for zest for life. And then I decided on the last two, uh, Clary Sage is a female hormone balancer. So it can help make you feel yourself that way again, right? But it also calls in your intuition and your clarity. It's an oil of knowing. And then juniper berry is the last one in there that dispels fears and nightmares. So all together, it, it really can take you from a place where you feel disempowered um, to, to giving you that extra strength. And even the women who love it, like, <clears throat> they're pretty strong, right? They're pretty intense chicks, but it just gives them, like, before a meeting or before an event. Like, I have a, a, a couple clients that are high-powered event organizers, and they just give the day of the event, everybody gets mojo. You know what I mean? Because there's no room for anybody to slow down or feel weak or not be on top of their game. So that's, that's literally what it's for. I, I love it so much. I love diffusing it. I also just love it almost as like a perfume. Um, it, is, it is. I mean, the only thing yeah. is you don't want to rub it all over your skin and get in the sun because of the citrus oils, right? They can make you a little more photosensitive. But if you put it, you know, somewhere that is not going to get direct sunlight, it's just fine. Yeah, I love that one. Um, there's so many more. You developed another one that actually is just so yummy and I don't have sleeping problems. So I don't use it for that, but I use it before I go to sleep because I just, I love it. And it kind of is a dream igniter, which I That's called right. you. I called you afterwards and I said, you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, I haven't had dreams for a while and I've been having some dreams lately and you go, oh yeah, that's kind of the review we get. Talk to us about deep sleep because you and Earl got off like Costco size Advil PMs that yeah. you guys were like taking to go to sleep. It was a total pattern and got weird random addiction. Which yeah, is I, it is because when you, when, you know, you know, sleep is everything. 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 I mean, we can talk about diet, we can talk about exercise, you know, but the, the big question is, are you sleeping? Are you getting quality sleep? And really, you probably don't have any trouble drifting off to sleep, but the fact that you're dreaming and, and even remembering those dreams, is it just a deeper pattern for you? And we play in the etheric levels in dream time. You know, you want to get to that deep level of sleep. So that formula was actually Earl's baby. He developed, um, that one has been in development for a long time. And it was finally our third or fourth formula. We were like, got it. You know what I mean? Like we yeah, got it. It's so yummy. Tell us what's in there. Cause it's a. Yeah. Mm. It's mostly woods and flowers, right? Woods and flowers. They're low to the ground and they're very relaxing. Vetiver is uh, the root of a grass from Haiti and it is nature's tranquilizer. So that's the club to the head, 
right? Um, that really takes you down into those deep levels. In fact, like we fight over who's going to pour deep sleep when we're making it. We have to do it at the end of the day, you know, and it's it, it, even the, our helpers that help us, they're like, please, I can't do deep sleep right now, you know, because they, it literally will just make you, I say it's like, it, I, I imagine it like just a bed of flowers on a forest floor where it just everything is so peaceful and wonderful and yummy, you know, that even if you don't have sleep issues, it's a ritual, right? You, we yeah. should all have sleep rituals um, that just ensures that it's going to be a magical, hormonally balanced, um, dreamy night. Yeah. Other than vetiver, what are a few of the other ones in there? I know there's, uh, a- there's clary sage, Roman chamomile. Um, there's, lavender of course and your fave hawaiian sandalwood i love it i just got a whole bottle from you the other day because yeah. I heard and, well, I- and and really clary sage is a female hormone balancer and hawaiian sandalwood is a male hormone balancer right and we all have both so to get your hormones balanced before you drift off is is just a really good favor you can do for yourself Right. There's also, let's talk about sex mix, seriously, because when I first heard that one, I was like, what? You're putting oils down there? And you and your husband, and we'll just, I'll say it here on on the Primal Blueprint podcast, when you came on, it's like tits, ats, vulva, in, out, wherever it's allowed, every oral, whatever, doesn't matter. But here's the thing. So it's an oil blend and everyone that I know who's tried it is like, I love it because oh, no, people buy it by the bushel. You know, the- <laughs> That's the, that was the complaint I got from her friend. She goes, the only problem with it is, is that I want it to come in a larger bot. Like she wants like a huge bottle by her bed. I'll make a large size. I mean, the thing is it's, it's it, Jasmine is so rare right. that I really want to make sure. And you know, I do this, like this is our little kit. We do everything in miniature because we are doing full potency, right? Like we make things strong, um, safe and effective. So obviously sex mix is one that's diluted because it's got to go all these places, right? Right. Um, and it's got to penetrate the tissue, but it's, it's, yeah, I had somebody order eight bottles. I was like, are you having a party? <laughs> yeah. Is there a party going on? Um, so it's Jasmine. There's, there's Jasmine is the oil of desire. And it's also rumored to be what was tipped on uh, Cupid's arrow, right? That he would dip it into a Jasmine flower before he uh, did that. And then geranium is the oil of, and now Jasmine also physically produces longer, stronger uterine contractions. If you get my draft, better orgasms right? Longer, stronger orgasms. Uh, geranium is a engorger, brings additional blood flow. It's also in our fat lips lip plumper. Which I love too. Yeah. It's a cinnamon yeah. yummy roll on little like lip oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no cinnamon in sex mix, but yeah, in ja- geranium no, is yeah, the no. crossover because we want that blood flow. the fat lips. Yeah. You don't want cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then it has Again, bergamot for self-love. You can't have good sex if you're not digging on yourself, right? It's also an antidepressant oil, which helps if somebody's kind of in a low mood. And then it has a Hawaiian sandalwood because that gives us a little more of the male hormones, which, which is what we need for like RAR, right? Yeah, and I love the RAR. A, 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 a secret carrier oil from Africa, which gives it its base note. And nice. it makes it very lubricating. But the, the point of that one, again, now Earl and I made that for ourselves. We created that because, I mean, you, you get together this long and then you start working together, like sex kind of gets to be uh, off the table as a regular, like we don't, you don't miss each other. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not like you can get together. He's even coming home from a long day of work where we go like, Ooh, I missed you. Right. So the thing about, and this is a really funny story, Al. You'll really like this. I don't, I don't, I haven't told this to anybody. Ooh, um, I'm excited now. Yeah, yeah. We used to have a little dog named Boo Boo, and Boo Boo was the boss of all of us, right? And we didn't quite realize to what extent until he was gone. But he the, he used to do this thing. He slept on the bed with us, and if Earl and I kissed or started, you know, getting intimate and it was on, boo-boo would harumph, flap his ears, and jump off the bed, right? And Earl and I would look at each other, oh, yeah, it's going down. Boo-boo got off the bed, 
right? And that sound of his feet hitting the floor was like, uh, are we just like, woo, we're going. <laughs> and there would be times when we would be like 15, 20 minutes into it, like really trying to get it going. And Boo Boo would be staying right there. And we'd be like, hmm, I guess it's not happening today. <laughs> Like he was your gauge. He was our gauge. So Boo Boo dies, right? And we have no idea anymore if we're if we're on or not on. You're so like, I need a guide dog for, for He that. was the sex guide dog, right? He's like, the light is blinking, you can go, right? And he would tell us. And so once he died, we just we didn't know. We we, we just forgot. And so sex mix tells us. You know what I mean? It's time and we can feel it and we know it, it's in our body and then it just improves it as an activity, right? And, and I mean, I would say we use it 90% of the time and the 10% that we don't use it, you know, we'd be like, you know, that was really good, but miss that sex mix. The smell. Yeah. Yeah, too. That's true too. Like the, the, that's the thing that everyone says is, is especially as well, like any kind of sex smells or anything that could be going on there are also diffused by that. Um, Hopefully that's never an issue really with anyone, but if it were, or, sometimes, the issue. or yeah. sometimes depending on what you eat, it could be an issue. So again, it's just kind of a foolproof way to like make that experience a little bit more enjoyable. And also in terms of the ability to not worry about it being in anyone's mouth. Uh, right. And you know, there's the autonomic experience of, right. of being linked to your memories with smell. Right. Right. So now we have so many experiences with that smell that really all we have to do is one of us just, you know, put it on and sort of walk by the other one and be like, hi, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you wearing? Right. So that's, uh, like that's our new signal now that boo boo's gone. I love it. Um, yeah, it's really funny. Wait, you have a lot of blends and again, people should look into this. Some of these are so amazing. One that is nails it for everybody that I, I think is just a all around for everyone winner is mint blast. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd love you to tell us how you developed it. Cause it's funny. It has to do with the cannabis industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, we, but I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and here's the thing, if we're talking about being an empowered woman, right. Is really embracing the things that you know are right for you. And a cannabis has always been a good friend of mine. Now, Back in the day, it was very recreational, right? We didn't quite know what we were getting. We had to go to some shady dude's house and, and sit there for too long. He's, you know what I mean? Like, like all, all of these things that we did. But so as I've matured into understanding that, and even my, my background, I had a lot of judgment around cannabis. But dang, did I like the stuff, right? So I, I just was really footing around it. And suddenly when I growed up, I was like, you know what? I just like this stuff. And it's a plant. It's plant medicine. And I'm not going to hold her political checkerboard against her. And the only reason why that exists is because she's so damn magical. They can't figure it out. Right. And it's the same as me not holding um, doTERRA's business plan, their, their, their thing against the actual plant medicine, right? Because I was, that was what I was doing. doTERRA is a multi-level marketing company and I had an issue with that. And so I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to go try find something else. But that's not the thing to do, right? The thing to do is to get over your shit and say, I really connect with this. And um, I really connected with cannabis and, and we just started including essential oils into cannabis events uh, at invitation, right? Because we were so comfortable with it. So now we do these really big cannabis events and um, they, somebody asked me if I could create something that was great for cannabis users. I said, absolutely. So I made Mint Blast, which is just peppermint, spearmint, and frankincense. And that they're all great respiratory oils. Um, the blend is a vasodilator, right? So it really helps to expand your lungs and, and clear your lungs. So it can be a little bit of an expectorant. And we use it like before we smoke, after we smoke, in our, our water pipe water, right? I mean, we call it the bong blend. Cause you can put it in the water of the bong and as you inhale, you get this like minty, fresh frankincense. Like it just really um, captures something and it's cooling the temperature of the smoke itself and your lungs. 
So everything is really thought out because I'm, you know how nerd, you know how nerdy I am, right? That they. I have- like to do a little dab. I'll take a little dab on my tongue. It's breath freshener. Um- oh my god, it's an amazing breath freshener. I mean, it's an amazing. all-purpose. And you put it on the back of your neck, instant air conditioning. It's totally it's a major headache reliever. As yes. Well, you know, and I, I know some people water. who. Yeah. Also working long days. Like I, I was on this shoot and there were these, and I told you, cause I called and ordered some kits for these girls. Cause I brought my kit with me and I had mint blast in it and they were just dragging. They're working, you know, 16, 18 hour days. And I go, I put in my palm and had them kind of breathe it in smell and through the mouth. And they were like, what is happening? And then afterwards they were like, we need some of that. That woke us up. That, that was just, you know, and I know you have other blends like high on life, everyone just go to malibueo.com. But yeah, we actually worked at some rehabs, you know, which is ironic uh, (laughs) because we work also with the cannabis industry, but whatever, right? These travel and, and that mint blast, I worked with several um, cocaine people in cocaine recovery. And not only does it come in basically the same container, (laughs) It, it's like a little mini drug replacement. For yeah, it's, it, it's a ritual replacement. And, and they took it and were like, okay, I'm going to be good. I'm like, you're going to be just fine, right? Because it does do that sort of, I'm up, <laughs> that, that we just need sometimes. It, and faster than, that. it's not jittery like coffee, right? Mm-hmm. It just lights up your brain. So that's, that's really the difference with it. Uh, No. And I want to just, before we wrap it up, I want to run down a few other uses and ways that I use it that I've learned through you. For example, when I come over and you pour a nice bottle of Grolsteiner or sparkling water, Mm -hmm. a little little drop of lime, a little drop of lemon. Never even thought about that, buying fresh limes and lemons. Obviously nothing wrong with that. They're abundant in California, but it's always nice to have it on hand when you run out. Um, As I did the other day and I put a drop in my iced tea because I really like lemon in my iced tea. Um, And then, yeah, just... Earl, it's right here. Stop calling your phone. <laughs> Sorry, he keeps calling his phone and it's ringing right now. Hey, Earl. <laughs> There's Earl. <laughs> I threw it. <laughs> uh, the phone? You just checked it? I'm like, I slid it. I did, you know, Indy with the idol. <laughs> I love it. There's, there's Earl, everybody. Or Karen, you can- <laughs> That's Earl, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yes, lime in your Garrosh Steiner. <laughs> I'm the girl shiner. Um, I love the new blend you made not too long ago called Ohm, which is very, mm. and um, gosh, I use so many. I use the Clary Sage for sort of hormone balancing in the second half of the month. Um, but really, isn't it about the education and the empowerment that something that was kind of out there for you, you know, you, you, you showed up when we met, you were poo poo oils. I was like, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, that's how I was. I'm like, whatever. I wasn't against being in an essential oils class, but I wasn't like, ooh, I've been waiting for this. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like that at all. Yeah. So, well, now, and now I have like the, I have, it's over there, but I had like the larger kit. Can you show us again? Show us, first of all, I love the keychain kit because for people that are just getting into it, they're just like five eighth drams and they have yeah. tiny little holes. So look, if, in the size of your fist, right, you have. Sex mix, lip plumper, pain away, deep sleep, mojo, high on life, brain on, and open air, right? So these, what I tell people, that, and when you want to talk about like feeling empowered as a woman, you got this with you, especially if you're traveling. Oh, I don't go without it. Nope. On I, an airplane. I would never be without this, right? And just feeling like you can up your game when you need to in a way that is like natural and magical and makes you smell beautiful and makes you feel feminine. You know what I mean? And, and and can be used in so many different ways. To me, it's the ultimate empowerment to be able to shift yourself from point A to point B. Yes. Right. Like sleepy to awake or you need to chill. Uh, Sometimes I just take the little lavender out. I'm like, all right, I need to relax. Almost got into a car accident or some weird stressful thing happened. Right. Take a breather, and and um, I was ha- I was hiking with a friend who was having some allergy stuff. We did some mint blast, ended up giving them a little dram. They were like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing!" Like, yeah, it's really just about a tool in your yeah. belt for because sometimes like we just have to keep going, and we don't feel like and and really it helps you to get into that relationship with your body where you're like is this kind of like a hormone thing? Is this like because of the environment that I'm in? Is this because, you know what I mean? Like you get to sort of dial in 
this relationship with your body through a language that it understands. It doesn't understand words. You know what I mean? It doesn't understand, like, just deal with it, right? That's all abuse to the body. So for women who are like, I, I need some, my, you know, my sister, she was like, do you have something that'll make me stop crying at my desk every day? You know what I mean? And I did, I gave her an empowerment blend and she quit that job. I love it. And it's, it's so simple. It's, it's not a, it's there, you know, again, you can do tiners and you can kind of choose which, you know, ones are possibly going to be right for you. Um, I, I, I can't say how much they've benefited in my life. It's just, it's almost like when I'm without certain ones of them, I, oh, yeah, it's very upsetting. It's kind of upsetting. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit, like, like when you run out and you're out of town and you're getting low on something, you're like, Oh, I got a couple more days left. I mean, that being said, the best oil is the one you have with you, right? It's right. It, it, whatever you've got with you will be fine. As long as you have at least one. Oh my God. There's nothing worse than when I'm like fussing around in my bag and there's none that's like I, you know even for everything else that i like to carry with me that and ponytail holders if i don't have at least one it can ruin my day exactly well cindy lou you are pretty much like a one-stop shop for empowerment we're talking about manifesting you know the four-man plan and going forward that way and also get mojo back or healing oneself or uplifting oneself or whatever the case or helping with sleep, whatever it may be with essential oils. And I'm going to say this, I don't, not just because uh, we're friends now, but I don't trust anyone else. A lot of people sell oils, but they're not certified in it. Yeah. I mean, that's not, yeah, yeah, I I really, you know, that's not to me, there's a plenty of people on our team that aren't certified. It's really well, but it's a- coming from you, and you guys are certified. Yeah, you, I mean, you're not making our- blends half-assed, right? I mean, other people might be. So, uh. yeah, I think the. I mean, I think the bottom line with that is who are you comfortable with mentoring you? You know, and this is another thing about choice as well. A lot of people have a cousin who sells doTERRA and these aren't Girl Scout cookies. You know what I mean? You aren't like doing it to support some distant relation. You're doing it to empower yourself. So whoever you choose, you want to choose someone who can actually mentor you into a lifestyle um, and give you guidance that it's not their way or the highway. It's, it's for us, we teach everyone to be their own healing artist. It's intensely personal, you know? And so it's really that approach um, that I think is appealing to our audience. Well said. It really is. Um, yeah, it's I, not necessarily about the degree, but I guess I think because I've seen your level of expertise between you and your husband, witnessing conversations, the trust is so huge because of all of those conversations I've heard. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, but so really awesome. Everyone, you can check out. Um, well, give us both of the websites. One for the four, we'll put them in the show notes. It's but- the fourmanplan dot com and um, malibueo.com. And can I just do a final sort of absolutely. Overall thing, um, yeah. because I think if if we're talking, you know, anybody who is listening right now that thinks I'm too big a mess, right? Um, I I don't have it together. Whether you're whether you think that you you aren't good at relationships, that you're broke, that you're you're don't feel good physically, or have some major health issues, right? Um, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity because everybody who has ever felt as badly as you, if you walk a path, right, that leads to, in a conscious way, feeling better, you get to look back and say, you know what? I remember how I did this. I know how I did this. And nobody wants... Nobody wants money advice from somebody who was raised in a rich family and had a trust fund from the beginning. And, you know, like nobody wants advice from that person because, you know, step one, get a million dollars, right? (laughs) And they never built it. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, like just allow yourself to see in whatever area you're in that you think is weak, like go ahead and build it, right? Because- you can do you can do it and it it's not about comparing yourself to anyone else it's about finding what's right for you and harnessing it and having no shame if you look at my book if you hear us tell our stories now about our health issues like Earl's okay. like do you really want to tell people that you were 
wearing diapers? I was like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I do. And I had an editor on my book go, you know, isn't that a little bit TMI? And I go, it is, but at, uh, I, it's real. It is because they can look at us now, right? They can look at me now and be like, oh my God, she seems so healthy and she's in a healthy relationship. Like if you would have seen the, the, the guys I would get in cars with, that was not okay. You know what well, I mean? Also, you, you couldn't have even, when you were at your worst with being sick, I remember you said something to me on a podcast and I totally understood it too. You could barely open the refrigerator door. Now that sounds oh. dramatic to people, but it's really real. And I love what you're saying because both you and I have been in horrific, horrific, unmovable dumps, hermits, can't leave, yeah. can't leave the house. Yeah, don't, don't have a life. I mean, I literally was in hiding for yeah. years, you know, and it's only now. And here's the other thing, uh, other, um, you know, empowerment thing too. It's like, I'm just buying a fucking bowel over the fact that it's not two separate things, right? It isn't that I did this dating book and now I'm oddly doing a, a health driven essential oils business. No, it's still um, about my presence, what I bring to both of those situations, you know what I mean? That I can use my acting skills for, I used to think like, oh, who's going to want to listen to health stuff from an old actor? You know, like that's, that's goofy. No, it's like, it's like what you said, the most popular, certainly thyroid books you said are written by patients. They are actually the best selling thyroid books. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've walked that journey, right? So, so that's, that's a really critical piece of the puzzle. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are definitely an empowered woman. And again, everyone check out her websites and do you, I know you don't, you have very few private coaching clients, not yeah. whales that you, you're also a guide and a, and a coach. Is a that- love coach. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do you still sort of offer that to people who- I do. I do. I'm, I'm very expensive um, because I don't want to have- That's why I was scared to bring it up because I know you are. But hey, if people are interested- <laughs> No, I mean, but people, you know, the clients that I do have, I, we definitely have that value exchange with each other. It's a very intimate relationship. It's certainly not therapy. There's quite a bit of woo-woo involved, right? So, um, and it's a, it's a real effort on- both of our parts, because I step, I walk people through their journey and to be able to see it from a lot of different dimensions and perspectives so that they can wrap their brain around it, not from just one point of view. You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's work that I always do. Um, It just depends on how heavily I'm leaning on that. And it's so funny because in our podcast with you, I called you a multi-hyphenate and you were like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, mm, I don't know about that really one. It's really okay for us to be those multi-hyphenates, you know, and embrace that without feeling it like we have to put every single one on our business card. Um, right, <laughs> like, like writer, to, actor, you know, like a speaker, a coach. I mean, there's like, right, there's, there's- a Yeah, lot. and they're all valid. I've done all them valid. all professionally. It's not just something that I've done in my bedroom, you know, but I, I used to be kind of embarrassed to say that I was one when I was talking to someone else. And that's the coming out of the closet for me now that I'm 47, right? That I'm feeling like, wait a minute, I don't want to have like take off this hat and put on that hat and then only let people see that side of me. I just want everybody to know like, I'm me. I got all this stuff going on, right? And that it's okay. And the other important yeah, the idea that we, that's a socially constructed American idea, I guess, of, and you do X, you are X. So when you say more than one or two things in a list, people, and so that's why it's reflected upon us and we feel weird about, right? And I agree, just embrace it, be transparent. I do all this stuff, there's nothing wrong, it's, it's all awesome and it's all fun. And if there's one area I can help you with it, right. Right, yeah, we'll just bring you into the fold, right? right. And that's, and that's, Something I think women will say, like, oh, it'll see him. Unpro-. Even Earl, he was so such a closeted aromatherapist at sound mixing, his sound mixing stuff, right? It's okay to let people know that you have other interests. You know, it might actually round you out and, and help you connect with people in a deeper way. Right, right. And yeah. just claiming an interest in something, sometimes people jump and they'll go, oh, so you, you're going to be a... Uh, 
There's no declaration. There's no, I have to be anything. It's just, I'm doing this over here. I don't know where to go. I'm doing this over here. I mean, it's 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 who cares? What do you care? Yeah. I always say my careers now are my four man plan, right? That graph is now filled with all of my different interests and loves and that I can do all of them and be all of them. And that, that's my next thing that I'm working on is, you know, once you have everything that you wanted, right. You know, cause people, people think, oh, if I get my book published, I'll be happy. If I find that man, I'm going to be happy. If I own a house, then I'm going to be happy. If I have a career that I love, then I'll be happy. Like, no guys. But let's do one more note on that. Cause we talked yeah. about it not too long ago with, uh, cause this is, look, this is so clear, especially people in, in their forties, because honestly, a lot of people in their forties have already accomplished a lot. They've got a house or a few houses or their own firm or whatever. But the bottom line is, is a lot of those people, this is what they express to people like Cindy Lou and I, they express, I'm not fulfilled. Yeah, I haven't left happy. a mark. I want to do something. I want to mean something. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with all of those things that they did, the, the, the banking, the, whatever, the three kids, the house, of course, but it just goes to show you, you've got to still follow a passion or desire. It could be a hobby. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't mean you ever need to make any money at it, but it means you've got to do what you want to do. You have um, to fill yourself up. You right? know, you really have to allow yourself to be full because all of culture and society's things that tell you, once you have this, then you'll be happy. You know, we hang out in Malibu. We see the most successful people in the world. They can be among the most miserable. Yep. Right. Because they're disillusioned. So if you're operating under some illusion that your, your goal is going to create your happiness, once you get there, get happy now. Fill yourself up now. Fill, fill who you are and get to know yourself now because it's, it's not going to make it better. You know? And long-term relationships, you better keep on going with that because otherwise you become that other person. You, you know what I mean? All kinds of resentments happen. It's like you have to know how to, to nurture yourself and fill yourself and be in love with yourself in any old little thing that you're doing. It doesn't even need to be special. That's it right. could be, you know, chopping your onions for dinner. Like just know that you're groovy. Absolutely. And also to, you know, it is, I, I know that you feel the same way as I do. All of our vocations are vacations. They're fun. Oh, we I love, love them. I heard that from someone yeah. who said that. I love it. I was like, yes, that's me where nothing feels like work. It's all so fun. And um, I wish that upon all of the people who quote have what they thought was the happiness of the success. And again, there's, there's stuff in theirs. And I'm like, Oh, I, I wish uh, I'd done that 20 years ago. Maybe bought that, bought that, but, but that's okay because God, I tell you what, and I said this to someone the other day and I'm not worried that I'm going to get there, but I literally said, I think if I like died homeless on a beach in 10 years, like I'd be really okay. Like yeah. I'm so fulfilled and so happy with what I'm doing that Oh, wow. I wouldn't want it to that way. I also, I'm just like, I don't think I would matter because my life was no. so. And, so and I try to, when I'm in that moment where like, I don't, I'm thinking weird things about myself or my life, you know, like I go into like, um, Japanese tea ceremony mode, you know, like, because I, we pour oils right now. Like I'm doing a lot of, um, grunt work of collating papers and pouring little oils. And I just like go all the way into it. Right. And be like, I am going to pour so carefully, so lovely with so much love and intention, you know, that that person's going to feel it. And suddenly this thing where it's like, hey, fill 80 bottles turns into a real love experience. Yeah. Real presence. Yeah. Well, we could, uh, there's so much good stuff here. We can go. <laughs> Thank I know you. we should stop. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Your work is amazing. Another really just, again, so wonderful to meet a strong, empowered woman learning from each other and having fun. So we, Elle and I, I mean, Elle, you coming into our life has been such a kick in the pants, you know what I mean? And, and it's really fun to, because you live a mile away, oddly that have you come right. over for our 45 minute, like, like let's get down and dirty for a minute before we go back off into our activities, you know. Right. And for people who haven't heard us talk before, um, her husband and I share, you know, thyroid issues or I don't have them, but share that problem. You had some from the black mold, but you're good now. Uh, oh, good. So, yeah. So we've had some real intimate health conversations too. And it's really nice to be able to 
uh, you feel less lonely when you've got other yeah. people going through the same I, thing. Health and love, you know, yeah. I mean, and spirituality, right? And, and our processes in that, like chicks need chicks. That's we, right. We need each other and we need to be intimate with each other. Yeah. Right. Not just like, hand, like my, just, my sister and I, it's like, it's all handbags and face creams. Like I give a shit, you oh, know, it, yeah. it really oh, is mm. about that finding your family based on how intimate you're willing to be with that person. You know, even if it's just for a short visit. That's right. Yeah. Being vulnerable just makes that connection stronger. Thank you so much. Cindy Lou Martin, Malibu Essential Oils, and also the Four Man Plan. We'll put all of the uh, links to connect with her on social media and otherwise in the notes. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Bye.